Hello and welcome. I'm Rambo Talabok and you're watching Rappler Talk. The Department of the Interior and Local Government or DILG again frequents the headlines, most notably for a recent bombshell announcement by its secretary, Eduardo Año. According to him, they want to revive the anti-subversion law. Speaking to, all, speaking to us about this right now is DILG Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya. Sir, thank you so much for going to our program today. Thank you for inviting me, Rambo. Okay, sir. Punta na tayo, sir, dun sa meat of the issue. Mm -hmm. Saan nang galing, sir, yung announcement mismo ni DILG Secretary Anyo na gusto niyong i-revive ang anti-subversion law? Well, as you very well know, Rambo, there's Executive Order Number 70, mm -hmm. uh, which is um, a recent executive order issued by the President creating the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict. And the purpose really of this task force is to come out with the whole of government approach mm -hmm. because the communist insurgency has been with us for the past 50 years. Mm -hmm. It has brought nothing but hardship mm -hmm. no, to our country. Uh, more or less around 100,000 people have been victimized by, by the insurgents, either on both sides, no? but mostly police officers and communist uh, uh, police officers and the government officials. So as part of the discussion of the task force, um, um, we were looking at possible, you know, we were looking really at the insurgency and what makes it tick, you know? mm -hmm. and um, we felt that stronger measures uh, are needed so that we can um, uh, somehow um, be able to stifle the logistics and the support mm -hmm. as well as the finance of the communist armed rebels in the mountains. Mm -hmm. If we look at the way they operate, no? The communist rebels in the mountains, which according to the AFP, numbers around 3,000 to 4,000, mm -hmm. are able to um, keep itself there precisely because of the support coming from the urban centers. Mm -hmm. no? And it is the urban centers no, that are fueling the logistics, the funding mm -hmm. for the communist rebels in the mountains. So even if government is able to neutralize a certain platoon mm -hmm. or a certain guerrilla front, there's always a fresh uh, source resources. of cadres mm -hmm. uh, from the urban centers. Mm -hmm. And the anti-subversion law, in our opinion, is one of those ways where we will be able to stifle mm -hmm. the funding source and the source of cadres mm -hmm. that, um, that, are, that keeps this communist insurgency mm -hmm. active for the past 50 years. Which particular part of the anti-subversion law do you want revived? Because it's primarily it bans membership to the Communist Party of the Philippines and then it was extended by a uh, presidential decree by Marcos including mm -hmm. organiza organizations which might um, overthrow the government. So is that what you want revived? Particularly the membership as a criminal act. You know, Rambo, we are open to um, crafting a new law. No? Mm -hmm. it, we can put in whatever safeguards uh, we require uh, because we are now operating in a different context. We're operating under a constitution, the 1987 constitution. So, so long as the law outlaws the Communist Party of the Philippines, mm -hmm. its armed component, the New People's Army, its United Front, the National Democratic Front, and all organizations directly supporting it, then we are fine. Uh, but we are open to working with Congress, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, various stakeholders to craft a law which would allow government to finally put an end to the communist insurgency. The DILG is open or the DILG is recommending for a new law? Well, we are open uh, to working with Congress mm -hmm. to realize the recommendation, our recommendation, that we need stronger laws to mm -hmm. be able to put an end. Because Rambo, no, mm -hmm. if we just keep on fighting the same war, mm -hmm. utilizing the same tools, 50 years from now, and maybe we're not here anymore, uh -huh. the communist insurgency will still be there. Okay, sir. Um, pwede ba natin sir isa-isahin kung anong particular acts you want to recommend to be outlawed? So there's the membership, there's the CPP as an organization, as mm -hmm. in power siya mag-exist at all? Yes. Any communist ideal? Yes. Ano sir? Yes, well, let, let, let me, ano, no, let me uh, clarify. No? Mm -hmm. um, adherence to communism mm -hmm. or adherence to, to, um, to Marxist Leninism in itself okay. is not criminal. No? So, kung napag-aaralan sa eskwilahan, napag-uusapan, hindi po criminal yun. Uh -huh. So, wala pong problema doon. No? What is criminal is if you join an organization which seeks to overthrow government. Mm -hmm. And any one of our readers, uh, uh, listeners, and uh, those who are yes. watching right now, no? yes. can check the website of the Communist Party of the Philippines. And you mm -hmm. will see there that the ultimate and primary purpose of the CPP-NPA is to overthrow 
the government of the Republic of the Philippines mm -hmm. through revolutionary armed struggle with the support of the urban mass movement. Kahit sir, wala dun sa mismong armed struggle ng CPP and As in, everyone who has that ideal to change a system. Kasi yun lang yung kanilang ideology, babagoy yung sistema, but it doesn't necessarily mean armed struggle. Yes. Madami mga taong gusto baguhin yung sistema. Mm -hmm. Kahit ako, Rambo, gusto ko rin baguhin ang sistema. There was a uh -huh. time I was also a student activist, no? Mm -hmm. So, wala tayong problema dun. Mm -hmm. Ang problema natin is membership in the Communist Party of the Philippines, which is clearly defined mm -hmm. by their program and their program is the violent overthrow of government mm -hmm. but through revolutionary armed struggle, through a protracted people's war, wherein guerrilla fronts are established in the regions and the countryside to encircle the cities. That's the program of the Communist Party. And any person who joins the Communist Party of the Philippines, mm -hmm. in our opinion, um, should be outlawed. In our opinion, Congress should revive the anti-subversion law to make it to make it uh, an illegal act. Even NDF, sir, as in yung mga organizations which can just be associated to the CPP but not really c completely putting their allegiance to the ideology. As in, ano lang, association lang, pwede na agad i-criminalize. Y yan ang problema, Rambo, no? uh -huh. which, uh, which is why hindi natin naiintindihan uh -huh. yung um, entire infrastructure nila. Mm -hmm. Sa opinion ng karamihan, at sa pagkakaalam ng karamihan, it is uh -huh. simply association. When in fact, it mm -hmm. is not association. This is one big conspiracy. Mm -hmm. no? Ito pong mga National, Democrat for, the National mm -hmm. Democratic Front organizations, what they do is they do mass-based building. And mass-based building is organizing on the labor sector, organizing in the youth sector, organizing in the religious sector, organizing there so that they can provide support to the uh, Communist Party of the Philippines and its armed wing. Meaning, these organizations directly support the Communist Party of the Philippines. Therefore, if mm -hmm. we can prove that they are directly supporting the CPP, then they should be liable under our laws if we are able to pass this uh, mm -hmm. anti-subversion law. Now, this is not, Rambo, no, no, this mm -hmm. is not to, um, the, the purpose of the law, the proposed law of, of the DILG is not to curtail freedoms, no? Um, it is not to uh, curtail legitimate dissent. Mm -hmm. no? People kasi are saying, anti subversion no panahon ni Marcos yan. No? Bakit bubuhayin natin? No? Precisely, nung panahon ni Marcos, it was an authoritarian rule. So we would admit that the anti subversion law during that time was abused because the context was different. At that time, Marcos can just issue a, an arrest, cease and seizure order. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, he does not need to go to court to prove the veracity of the allegations. Anyone can be brought uh, and jailed. But now, we have laws in place. We have a democratic constitutional order in place. Therefore, when this law is passed, if Congress decides to pass it, and someone is accused of uh, violating the anti-subversion law, that mm -hmm. person has to be brought to the fiscal for inquest. Mm -hmm. And if the fiscal uh, determines probable cause, and then only then, can it be filed in court? Mm -hmm. And then the court will decide. Mm -hmm. So this is this is a different context yes, sir. altogether. Pero sir, kasi some would argue, especially political and human rights experts, mm -hmm. now while we're not in the Marcos era right now, mm -hmm. they're still seeing indications and similarities with the dictatorship. I still make questions then about uh, due process. Mm -hmm. For example, the war on drugs. There are mm -hmm. questions about drug suspects not even reaching inquest because they're shot down in anti-drug operations. So the question now I would ask, I would like to ask, I guess, is um, improving membership. Hindi ba arbitrary yun, sir? You wouldn't know if someone is actually directly linked to the group and law enforcement and the military might abuse that because they have a long-standing grudge against the Communist Party of the Philippines. You know, Rambo, everybody is entitled to their op own opinion. We are a democratic country. No? Everybody can speak. Everybody can c can criticize. No? Everybody in Facebook, in all types of social <laughs> media. And, and in fact, some countries are uh, criticizing us. We have such a um, vibrant democracy in a sense that freedom of speech is a is a tenet of uh, how we are. No? Yes. So I can understand if people are um, raising this criticism uh -huh. uh, over the, um, uh, uh, the, the anti-subversion law. Mm -hmm. But let me just emphasize that the context is different. When people say martial law, the critics would immediately say, this is the martial law of Marcos. No, we have seen how martial law is implemented in Mindanao. 
under this administration. There is no closure of Congress. There is no arrests of uh, political opposition. No? Mm -hmm. There is no... Martial law in Mindanao, and we have been to Mindanao so many times, is uh -huh. simply about checkpoints. It is mm -hmm. not a curtailment of liberties. It is not the widespread uh, arrests of people. It is not the crackdown which this, um, the critics would like us to mm -hmm. see. But people also would like to float through the cases of, for example, Senator Laila de Lima mm -hmm. and Senator Antonio Trillanes as ways that are when um, these are processes that were uh, pursued through the court but still they're branded as political persecution so isn't it going to be the same for the anti-subversion law mm -hmm. sabihin nila ah gagamitin to ng Duterte administration against critics of the administration and we are we all know the CPP is one of the harshest critics of this administration of course and that is why uh, I guess as again as I say it's part of the democratic space no mm -hmm. so um, the issue of Trillanes, for example, there were attempts, no, there were cases filed, but nothing happened. No, he's uh, he's free. So uh, the rule of law, uh, in this case, um, prevailed, and so is in the case of Senator De Lima. She is given all the possible mm -hmm. uh, legal remedies available to her. And in mm -hmm. fact, she's always in the headlines because she ha can uh, raise her. Um, voice as a senator, even though she's detained, mm -hmm. she ma detained. makes her voices heard. Mm -hmm. I always read her in the papers. Mm -hmm. So it, this is not the authoritarian martial law, which is of the Marcos period, when when someone is arrested and not heard of, you know, and then suddenly he's dead. You know? This is a different context. And, and I hope people will understand that what, what fuels this desire on the part of government is we want to end this. We, we, government must be given the tools mm -hmm. to end uh, this. You no. Know? In, in hindsight, uh, Rambo, let me just add, no? yes. that we felt that the uh, government has given too much already uh, to the communist movement. No? When um, EDSA revolution happened and uh, Joma Sison was released from jail, mm -hmm. no? um, and then during the Ramos administration, peace talks were revived, mm -hmm. one of the demands of the Communist Party of the Philippines was precisely the... Uh, the repeal of the anti-subversion yes. law. Mm -hmm. And the it government repealed. acceded mm -hmm. <laughs> to, the de to their demands yes. in the hope that peace would happen, in the hope that a political settlement would happen. 30 years later, 40 years later, we're in the same same situation. Mm -hmm. So, yun na lang talaga yung solution na gusto makita ni Diaz. These are as an outlaw everything. Outlaw um, membership in an organization that membership. is that is dedicated to the violent overthrow of government. Okay. Punta tayo sir sa integrity. So you have the membership mm -hmm. of uh, um, in the CPP and associated groups. What else does the DLG want to outlaw? That's it. In lang sir membership. Yes, we Supporting. are we are focused. Uh -huh. So any organization that directly supports the Communist Party of the Philippines, the New People's Army, mm -hmm. no, and we will have to prove that in court. Mm -hmm. uh, will also be subjected to uh, the anti-subversion law if it is passed. Anong classing support, sir, yung gusto niyong i-outlaw? Financial? Financial. Ano pa, sir? No, uh, if, if, if an organization um, is in charge of recruitment mm -hmm. of cadres, mm -hmm. and these cadres are uh, brainwashed, no? are uh, oriented and brought to the mountains, that mm -hmm. is direct support. Mm -hmm. Logistical, financial, and source of uh, source of uh, cadres, mm -hmm. which later on become New People's Army guerrillas, which kill our policemen, our government officials, and all those who oppose them, mm -hmm. and who impose revolutionary taxes, who burn uh, uh, government projects, uh, equipments of government projects. How about sympathizers? No, sympathizers would not fall under. Uh, the definition of the DILG. As I said, we have no um, desire mm -hmm. here to, uh, we, we want to learn from the past. Uh, we have no desire whatsoever. The instruction of the Secretary to us mm -hmm. is very clear. This is only um, to be implemented to the members of the CPP, NPA, NDF, mm -hmm. their united front, and all organizations that are directly supporting uh, them. Okay, sir. Anong timeline? Na nakikita ng DLG dito. When do you want it passed? Uh, well, it would depend on Congress when uh, they will pass it. We are here simply to to propose it. 
um, we hope that a congressman would uh, file a bill. We can prepare the bill for them. Meron na ba, sir? Wala pa. Wala pa, actually. Congressman nor Senator, wala pa? I, I don't know. I have not checked Congress. But uh. on the part of the ILG, we have not yet crafted the bill. No? Mm. But ayo namin yung presidential decrees mm -hmm. na ipinasa ni Marcos. No? Mm -hmm. We understand that these were repressive. Mm -hmm. no? Kasi there were several of them. Eh. The first one was during the time of Carlos P. Garcia, mm -hmm. which was focused on the Hukbalahap and the old uh, Communist Party of the, the Philippines. It's the very first one. It's yeah. the very first one. Mm -hmm. And then there were two or three presidential decrees which codified the anti-subversion laws, mm -hmm. no? which unfortunately removed the safeguards of the old of the first law. What about the Marcos um, PD? Does the DLG not like, sir? No. Ano, ano, what about it? Uh, well, nawala dun yung, ano, nawala dun yung dalawang witnesses. Mm -hmm. no? There were two witnesses requirement. Uh -huh. Under the old uh, RA 1700, tinanggal mm -hmm. nila yon. Mm -hmm. No, uh, there were uh, very loose language mm -hmm. which can be misinterpreted by both the law enforcement, prosecution, and the courts. Mm -hmm. So we want to tighten the language. We're open to working with Congress to tighten the language. Okay. Paano yung ano consultation nito, sir? What's the process for it? Is it just go speaking with the military or may pagwasa din kaya sa mga former rebels? I suppose. Yes. Uh, well, uh, kami kasi we have you know. The DILG, the Philippine National Police, the Armed Forces, they've been at it for a long time. Yeah. So they know how they operate. No? Mm -hmm. And it is, it is because of the government's desire to finally put an end to it that nabuhay ito. So I think our role here really is resource persons. I think it is the role of Congress to call for hearings, no? uh, to get the experts to weigh in on this issue, and for them to craft a law which would also enshrine the constitutional guarantees of freedom of speech and assembly into this new version of the anti-subversion law. Okay, sir, ano yung nag-prompt sa DILG na simulan yung recommendation na to? Is there a new deadline for the DILG to eradicate mm -hmm. communists in this country? Or is this purely of the DILG Secretary, Secretary Anyos? There's really, there's really nothing that prompted. Um, just in the course of the meetings with uh, various members of the task force, it, uh -huh. just, it just came out that we cannot be fighting the same war for the past 50 years utilizing the same tools. Uh -huh. no? that, it has, that the communist movement has been dragging, dragging us down for so long and leading to the deaths of so many. Yes. So we, have to, we, we wanted new approaches. So we, we realized that without the support of the urban mass movement, yeah. Uh, the uh, guerrilla fronts will collapse. Uh -huh. So we feel that uh, with the passage of this law, no, the inevitable end of the communist movement, one of the last in the world, will finally happen. Okay, sir. Ano yung masasabi nyo dun sa nagsasabing uh, pinagpahabawal na ng DLG ang activism? Ay, naku. Mali-mali uh, po yan. And uh, it's good you reminded me because mm -hmm. we will issue a clear statement hopefully within the day or maybe tomorrow. But what do you want to say about it, sir? No, I, I'm a, I was a student activist myself during in, in my youth. No, I wrote for publications which are considered left. No, uh, We consider um, activism as important, which is also the reasons why the president himself assigned the proposed uh, the law, which uh -huh. declared a National Students' Day, mm -hmm. no? which in the text of the law uh, mentioned that not student activism has made a, a vital contribution to the development of the nation, uh -huh. which is true. No? And enlightened and critical youth is important for the defense of the country. Uh -huh. no? So, wala po kaming problema sa ganun. No? Ang ayaw lang namin is when schools are no longer marketplace of ideas, but simply the bastion of a certain ideology. Uh -huh. Kasi ang sinasabi kasi is, papasok na daw yung pulis, papasok na daw yung military sa mga eskwilahan natin, and maniniktik. That was the word used no? yeah, yeah. by uh, um, when I was in another show with a leftist uh, uh -huh. a member of Congress. No? Yes. Sabi ko sa kanila, wala po tayong uh, uh, dahilan na para maniktik dito. Yes. We are going to the schools to open up the minds of the youth that mm -hmm. there is um, active communist recruitment in the schools. Mm -hmm. Meaning, kung pinag-aaralan ang, ang uh, Marxismo, Leninismo mm -hmm. at Mao Chitong thought sa mga eskwilahan, bakit hindi pwedeng pag-aralan din yung mga programa ng gobyerno? Para yung kabataan, no? uh, hindi siya malinlang, na maliwanag sa kanya na pag pumasok siya dito, pwede siyang maging rebelde. Baka ang takbo lang ng utak niya, ay hindi ko lang gusto ang gobyerno, gusto kong ipahayag yung gusto ko in a democratic manner. Mm -hmm. When in fact, yung pinasok niya is, will eventually lead him or her 
to arm struggle. Pero wala naman sir gagawin ng DALG or the government when it comes to the curriculum of schools. Ah, Kung tinuturo nila ang Marxism, Leninism. Wala, wala. 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 That is academic freedom. Mm -hmm. no? Pero ang, and maliwanag po sa amin ang definition ng academic mm -hmm. freedom. And academic freedom is the authority of the school to choose its own curriculum, mm -hmm. especially colleges and universities, and determine how it is taught. Mm -hmm. no? So, wala po kaming uh, problema dyan. Recommendation lang na sana isama rin yung programa ng gobyerno. Exactly. Kasi, uh -huh. ang sinasabi, pagpapasok na yung gobyerno sa maiskwela, militarization. Mm -hmm. Martial law na kaagad. Mm -hmm. Sandali lang, yung mga magulang dumaing, umiyak sa, sa Senado. Kasi yung mga anak nila, kung na, na pariwara, in their opinion, na pariwara. At hindi mo rin pwedeng ilayo sa mga magulang yun. Mm -hmm. Dahil pinaaral nila yung mga anak nila. Pinasok nila sa eskwilahan para paaralin. Kung ikaw din ang magulang, Rambo, kung ako magulang, may inis din ako eh. Mm -hmm. Dahil hindi ko pinasok yung anak ko sa eskwilahan para maging NPA. Uh -huh. Pinasok ko siya para makapag-aral at makapag-contribute ng positibo sa ating bansa. Mm -hmm. Punta na tayo, sir, sa students. So, kung yes. bubuhayin man ng anti-subversion law, ano yung penalties for students, minors, who get recruited? Ah, well, uh, iba po ang batas para sa mga juveniles. No? Mm -hmm. So, meron tayong special law for that. No? So, we will treat, of course, uh, students differently. Kasi karamihan dyan mga minors. No? But mm -hmm. of course, if you are already of majority age, yes. the full full extent of the law. Full extent na. Oh, uh, Rambo, hindi pa kasi, uh, sa, as I said, wala pa namang pinag-uusapang panukalang batas specifically mm -hmm. dito. So, hindi pa namin, hindi pa namin pinag-uusapan yung mga um, schedule of penalties. Yeah. No? Pero I think closer to the RA-1700 rather than the presidential decrees of Marcos. Mm -hmm. Kung meron man doon tayo lalapit sa RA-1700. Okay. Kasi parang naisip ko, hindi ba pwedeng magkaroon ng rehab kuno for for what the government thinks are people who can, you know, turn back. Kasi ginagawa naman yun ngayon sa mga surrenderees. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, is it going to be like that? Or full force of the law for everybody above or 18 and above? Well, I think we can make a special exemption for young children, young, young people. Um, sa pagkaka sa pagkakaalam namin sa pag-aaral namin sa komunistang uh, sa Kilusan, yes. ang kabataan dalawang taon lang pwede mo na siyang gawing NPA. Yung mga uh, magsasaka limang taon yan. Mm -hmm. Yung mga labor leaders na yun naman yun, yun yung unang hinubog ng ano yes. labor movement sampun taon. No? Uh -huh. So, very vulnerable talaga yung kabataan. Okay. So, since, kumbaga, they are a special sector, I yes. think we can come to some sort of agreement no? with Congress, no? mm -hmm. and I hope some congressmen are listening right now, no? mm -hmm. na pwede natin gawa ng special arrangement um, system yung ating mga kabataan na who were unfortunately um, brainwashed into uh -huh. this kind of ideology. So, magkakaroon, sir, ng ano to? Um, strands for the punishments, leaders, members, um, sympathizers, hindi naman sympathizers, but students. Is well, let, let, let's see. Let's see on uh -huh. how. But definitely, Rambo, I can I can state to you, and daming members ng task force, dati mga student activists, mm -hmm. and daming mga members ng task force, UP, PUP, no? So, wala po, wala po tayo dito ang intensyon na tanggalin ang student activism. The contribution of student activism to the country is immense. I was, I am, I was myself, a student activist, no? Ilang taon din ako pabalik-balik sa US Embassy at sa National Press Club at sa Liwasang Bonifacio yes. at natiyagas na ako ng ilang beses. Mm -hmm. So, so, <laughs> so I know exactly what it is to be a student activist. So, I will not support this if I do not know what it, what it intends to do. And it simply intends to stop this long-running communist insurgency, which is one of the reasons why uh -huh. we have not yet fully developed as a nation. What will happen to the local peace talks that the DILD is pursuing? Ganito po yan. The president himself has not said that the peace talks are completely over. Mm -hmm. no? Laging sinasabi niya, no? although he has already issued some executive order, yes. lagi siyang bukas. And even Congress uh, Senator Bongo has said na bukas ang gobyerno sa peace talks. So, mm -hmm. Kung sasabihin ng Pangulong Duterte, peace talks tayo ulit, we will abandon this anti-subversion law because this will be incongruent. <laughs> so, diba? it all depends on the president. Yes. Pero, oh. pero when uh, we raise this issue, wala namang sinabi ang Pangulo. No? Ibig sabihin, uh, talagang nawala na siya ng gana. No? Uh, he feels that he is talking to a blank wall. Uh -huh. no? But as I said, if uh, Congress, uh, uh, if uh, a decision is made, to pursue national peace talks. Mm -hmm. We will withdraw our proposal for an anti-subversion law and instead 
uh, focus on uh, the national peace talks or the local peace engagement or uh -huh. the local peace talks which we are pushing for. Yung, ano sir, uh, clarification. So the president knows that you want to recommend or you're recommending for yes. the revival. Ano your reaction niya? Would you know? Well, um, he has asked us to give details. No, uh, That's as far as I know. Uh -huh. uh, but um, the secretary has been very public about this. And in other words, uh, there is no, um, there is tacit support on the part of the president because if um, he does not like it, then he, I'm sure Secretary Anyo would receive a call. <laughs> but this comes from Sir Anyo, Sir Secretary Anyo. Yes. Okay, sir. Um, another option that is being floated for the DLG is expanding the Human Security Act. Yes. So, how will this be compatible with your current? push for the revival of the anti -subversion. Technically, these are two things. Yes. No, these are two things. Um, they are complementary to each other, but both uh, proposals uh -huh. are separate, Yes. but they are mutually supporting. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but we also support the call of uh, uh, Secretary Lorenzana to pass a stricter uh -huh. and stronger Human Security Act. Mm -hmm. uh, in particular, the wiretapping, the access and the ability of government to wiretap, to, to use uh, surveillance technology mm -hmm. for wiretapping is, in our opinion, um, very short. And also the authority of government to detain suspects uh, is also very short. Any recommendations or the DILG? You, you, just, 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 you just can imagine, Rambo, no? yeah. if, we're, if we're looking for Osama Bin Laden and all we have is 30 days. Osama Bin Laden was arrested after several years of surveillance. Yeah. Ganun talaga when you fight terrorism. Mm -hmm. So, we support the recommendation of um, Senator Lorenzana that it should be at 60 to 90 days. 60 to 90. Give government some flexibility because we're now living in a different era. No? We have ISIS in. We have, uh, we have uh, very difficult uh, internal security challenges, external security challenges as well, with the recent rise of uh, suicide bombings, which allegedly are have been per perpetrated by Filipinos. With uh, President Duterte declaring the CPP and PA as a terrorist organization, gagamitin din kaya sir yung HSA, Human Security Act, against them? Sa ngayon, hindi masyado nagagamit mm -hmm. yung Human Security Act because, um, as I was told, it's deficient and it's very difficult to implement. But if we are able to uh, amend it, no? maybe government will be able to utilize it more. So it's an open door for you to use the HSA because terrorists for the government pa rin ang CPP and PA. Yes, we can either use the uh, Human Security Act as it is worded now, or we can use the re regular laws under the Revised Penal Code and Special Laws Fire to go arms, against yes, arms. to go against uh, terrorists. Okay. But um, given the rising challenges of, <clears throat> of uh, modern-day um, terrorists, I, I think our laws should also be amended to adapt to changing realities on the ground. Okay, sir. Before I let go of you, sir, I'm mm -hmm. going other, other issues that sure. are pressing for the DILG. So, the first is the DILG is ordered to clear roads for the mayors. Yes. How is that, sir? What's latest? Nako, uh, napakaganda, Rambo. Uh, sometimes, um, sometimes you wonder, why didn't we do it earlier? No? Um, it's, uh, I, we are so happy with the response of our mayors. Um, there are challenges really. Kaya pag tinatanong kami, sino ba ang nangunguna, sino ba ang nalilate, eh, yes. napakahirap sagutin, Rambo, kasi unfair. Uh -huh. If I were Mayor Joy Belmonte, hihirapan ako. Ang laki ng Quezon City yes, kasi it is 40% of Metro Manila. Kaya siya rin yung tumawad na 45 going 60. <laughs> right, siya nagsabi. Yeah, pero ang ganda, lumalabas yung mga best practices eh. Kasi mm. si Mayor um, ng Marikina, mm -hmm. he's sharing now what he did to the other yeah. mayors. Si Mayor Samora of San Juan, he's building a multi-level parking spaces yes. for his people. Si uh, Mayor Abibinay of yeah. uh, Makati is planning to build uh, public buildings with parking yeah. pa to accommodate. No? Ang dami nangyayari. Baklaran has been cleaned already, mm -hmm. uh, rid of uh, illegal vendors. And as a long-term solution, a water channel in front of the Redemptorist Church will be converted, converted into a... Uh, people's Park with 2,000 mm. to accommodate to some 2,000 to 3,000 mm. illegal vendors. These plans sound good, sir. Mm -hmm. pero, pero parang ano siya medium to long term. Yes. So it's beyond 60 days. Yes. Ano mong yan, sir, sa 60 days kung lumampas sila doon? Ganito yan, Rambo. Kung babasahin natin yung DILG Memorandum Encouragement. Circuit, it's, ang sinabi doon is substantial improvement. Uh -huh. So hindi naman kami uh, diktador na sasabihin na ikaw, ikaw, mayor, ikaw. Yes. Alam namin kung gaano katigas ang ulo ng ating mga kababayan. With yes. all due respect, pasensya na po. Yes. Totoo uh -huh. naman eh. <laughs> Let's call a spade a spade. Ang ugali ng Pilipino, ang feeling nila, pag nasa harapan ng uh, bahay mo sa'yo, 
Uh -huh. So, lalagyan mo ng kung ano dyan, structure dyan, sasarahan mo, sasementuhin mo, gagawin mong parking space. That's really the problem. And we've, been, we've neglected this for so long. Now that the Mayor Isko has shown the way and the mm. President saw that it's possible, mm -hmm. sabi niya, gawin natin. So, after six days, ang gagawin natin, we will make an accept, assessment. Uh -huh. Was there substantial improvement? Okay. If there was, then there's no reason for us to recommend the suspension of any mayor. Pero kung wala? Anak ko. We will definitely. Maliwanag po yan. We, we, called, we called all of the mayors. Uh -huh. in the, you were there. Okay. Uh, you, we called all of them. First, it was the Metro Manila Council. Then, it, it was a meeting with them. And then, we're going, out of the, uh, we're going outside of NCR. Yes. Kakausapin namin yun mga mayors din sa labas ng NCR. Now, you also have to continue your road clearing kasi hindi rin kayo exempted. Mm -hmm. Hindi naman to, sir, mapopoliticize. Well, uh, there were... Uh, there were some criticism at the beginning na ganun. But immediately na dispel yun, alam mo kung bakit? Bakit? Kasi inuna namin yung mga national government agencies, yung mga, yung police station na nakaharang, barangay hall na nakaharang. Pinakita namin na kahit gobyerno rito, susunod. Mm -hmm. You know, Rambo, nung, uh, when was this? Uh, last week, Friday, sa secretary, uh, tinanggal niya yung barangay hall ng uh, damayan lagi sa Quezon City. Mm -hmm. Very clear na sa sidewalk. And then, dalawang police station pinuntahan yung sa traffic sector malapit sa NLEX. Nagmamakaawa yung mga police doon. Aha. Saan daw sila lilipat? Saan daw? Pwede daw ganito. Sabi ni Secretary, no. If, if we do not implement this, people will say, nako, napupolitika. Nagpapalakasan. Okay. Wala, tinanggal. Right then and there, tinanggal. So, um, hindi pa naman po tapos yung 60 days. There's, there's enough time. Ipaki sana ipakita ng mga mayors natin okay. na seryoso sila dito sa gusto natin. Mangyari. Yung mga hindi nagde-deliver, sir, gagawa nyo rin ng listahan. Because that has been the style of the government, right? So, is it on the table? Reporter ka talaga ng DILG Rambo. <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, ang plano namin is this. Um, when we reach the midpoint, which mm -hmm. is around September first week, mm -hmm. we will make an assessment. And we will make a percentage lang, parang percentage lang na in the NCR, this number of LGUs have showed substantial compliance. Uh -huh. This one hindi, this one medyo mahina. Ganun muna kami. Wala muna kami lista-listahan kasi, you know, mahirap po ang maging government official. no? And I can feel for these mayors. Bakit? I can feel for them. So, mm -hmm. we, we have to give them all the support they need. Kasi kung minsan, Rambo, hindi rin sila may kasalanan. Kung minsan, national government. Ano pinagkaiba nito, sir, sa drug issue? Ah, Bakit for this one, pat on the, on the, on the palm lang at saka, pero sa drugs, wala kaming tolerance at all. Pero dito, okay lang kahit anonymous, percentage lang. No, Rambo, ito may deadline na 60 days. Yung drugs, wala naman deadline 60 days, maubos lahat ng drug addict. Wala mm -hmm. naman ganun dito eh. Uh -huh. So, as I said, let's be fair naman to them. You know, itong mga to, tao yung mga yan yeah, eh. Yeah. Yung illegal vendors, para sa atin na, na, na pay-perwisyo, para sa atin, palayasin yung mga yan, mga illegal vendors, pero may mga pamilya yung mga yan. May mga pinaaaray yung mga yan. And you know, Rambo, no? um, one of the anecdotal things, when you start removing illegal vendors, uh -huh. crime goes up. Okay. I've heard that so many times when I go around. So, uh, Iba balance kailangan ng mayor dito, no? When you remove a police station, ang responde ng police lalayo kasi wala na siyang wala na siyang police station doon. And mm -hmm. it's the fault of government na walang lupang ibinigay. Uh -huh. And wala tayong resources na ganoon. So, um, hindi po ganoon kadali itong ginagawa natin. Okay, sir, to wrap this up, na mm -hmm. balik tayo dun sa anti-subversion law. Yes. Assurances na lang, sir, na hindi maabuso yung recommendation at saka ng police at military yung recommendation ng DILG. Yes. I'd like to assure our public no, na this is a different anti-subversion law being proposed by the DILG as opposed to the one during the martial law period. Mm -hmm. Nung panahon po ng Pangulong Marcos, it saya lang ang gumawa ng batas na yun. It was a presidential decree. Mm -hmm. Ngayon po, we are, we are open into the public it will pass through three readings in Congress kung umabot man doon. Another three readings in the Senate. And if there are conflicting provisions, it will be through a bicameral conference yes. committee. Everyone can weigh in. Mm -hmm. And as should be in a democratic country. So kung ano man po mapasa dyan, I am confident that it will have the necessary safeguards to protect the gains of democracy 
since the 87, since the 86 ADSA revolution. Pero kaya lang po namin pinopropose ito kasi gusto po sana namin matuldukan na yung problema natin sa communist insurgency. Kasi para sa atin sa Metro Manila, parang wala lang. Pero sa probinsya, malaking bagay po ito kung masasawata na natin. Finally, ang New People's Army at lahat ng mga organisasyon who provide them sustenance and uh, uh, sustenance and uh, support. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank that has Rambo. been Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya of the DILG. I am Rambo Talabong. Thank you for watching.